we need to talk about Marco Wilson, but it's a good thing. I think Marco Wilson has turned the corner. He's figured it out, whatever it is. And I think it's time for Arizona Cardinals fans to be excited about Marco Wilson. But before we look at where things are trending with Wilson, let's look at how we got here. Starting with his collegiate career. Playing with Florida in the SEC, Wilson regularly went up against NFL caliber receivers in college. And he played well in his freshman year, hosting PFF defensive grades of 71.3 and coverage grades of 74.2. There were high hopes for Wilson. But two games into his sophomore year, he had an ACL injury that ended his season. He returned in 2019 and posted a respectable defensive grade of 70.8 and coverage grade of 69.3. But the 2020 season is when everything went sideways for Marco Wilson. Wilson struggled on the field and his grades regressed to a concerning level. His defensive grade was 53.8 and his coverage grade was 54.3. But he also had the infamous shoe incident. In a game against LSU, in a moment of celebration, Wilson through an opponent's shoe, which resulted in a 15 yard penalty that allowed LSU to come back and win the game. Heading into the NFL draft, between the fact that Wilson did not improve over his college career, in fact, in his last season, he had a significant regression, and the shoe incident, there were questions about Wilson's decision making and whether he could take coaching and develop. Was he just getting by on his physical tools? And that was a legitimate question when you consider how impressive Wilson's physical traits are. His relative athletic athletic score of 99.9 .9 was chocked full of jaw dropping numbers highlighted by a vertical jump of 43.5 inches and a 40 yard dash time of 4.35 seconds. Quite simply put, Wilson had elite tools for the position. In fact, if he had not experienced the regression he did in 2020, he probably would have been taken on day one or two of the draft. But based on those traits, the Arizona Cardinals traded up into the fourth round to select Wilson with the 136th pick. Now Wilson's start with the Cardinals was rough. He did play in 14 games his rookie season, starting in 13 of them, but he really struggled. He failed to record a single interception his rookie year and had paltry PFF grades with a defensive grade of 48.6 and a coverage grade of 47.8. But going into this season, there was hope that with one year under his belt in the NFL and another training camp to work through, Wilson could take a step forward and improve on his rookie year. But things started out rocky in Wilson's second year as a pro, with coach Cliff Kingsbury noting during the preseason that Antonio Hamilton had surpassed Wilson on the depth chart, meaning Wilson would only be playing during nickel situations. But then something unexpected happened. Antonio Hamilton had a scary cooking incident that resulted in severe burns on his legs and feet. Subsequently, Hamilton started the season on the reserve non-football injury list, clearing a path for Wilson to once again be a starting cornerback for the Cardinals. But despite having this opportunity, Wilson struggled out of the gate. In his first five games, Wilson posted only one defensive grade over 50. Not only had Wilson failed to take a step forward, but it appeared he had regressed from his rookie season. But then things started to turn around for Wilson in week six against the Seahawks. Wilson posted a defensive grade of 68.9 and a coverage grade of 79.1. Though the team was struggling, Wilson showed signs of improvement. And then the following week against the New Orleans Saints, Wilson had his first career interception, which he returned for a diving touchdown that has become meme worthy. Now Wilson struggled the next week against Minnesota, posting a PFF grade of 33.4. But this would be the last bad game Wilson would have to date. From week nine through 16, Wilson didn't have a PFF grade below 6. And to cap off this stretch, Wilson had not one, but two interceptions against the GOAT, Tom Brady, in week 16. Now to put this into perspective, if Wilson were to play a full season with the kind of grades he's posted from week six through week 16, he would grade out as a top 15 NFL corner. And if he were able to play a full season with the kind of grades he's put up from week nine through 16, he would grade out as a top 10 NFL cornerback. And what's also noteworthy is that this stretch has come while Byron Murphy has been sidelined. The Cardinals have not been able to hide Wilson defensively. He has drawn legitimate NFL receiver matchups. Now I get that we're only talking about a half a season of production. Wilson needs to keep this up before we call him a star. But when you take everything into context, the linear progression, the consistency of his play over that stretch and his physical traits, there's reason to be optimistic. And if he's really figured it out, whatever that means, with his elite traits, the sky is the limit for Wilson. He has the physical tools to be a pro bowl cornerback if he's got the mental and schematic side of the game down. And for a team that has a 
lot of work to do to turn things around this offseason. To have Wilson develop into a legitimate starting cornerback would be a heck of a start. Cardinals fans, I think it's time we start to get excited about Marco Wilson. Who are some of the other players you're excited about on this team? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Cardinal Rule.